Let's read 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52. In, the, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So what does this mean as far as the last trump? Now, first, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you what many people will do with this passage. And what, what, the way they handle it is wrong, but it's what they do. So get with me Revelation chapter 8. And notice with me Revelation 8, verse 2. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then if you go to chapter 10, verse 7, you're, we're skipping over the interim trumpets. We're just going to go to the last one. Revelation 10, 7, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, so this is the seventh trumpet, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. And so what happens here is, uh, and we'll get Revelation eleven 15. Let's look at that as well. Revelation eleven fifteen, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And so here's the way this plays out. What people do is they take that seventh trumpet, which is obviously well into the 70th week, and they say, aha, well, the last trumpet can't be the first trumpet, it can't be the second trumpet, it can't be the third, fourth, fifth, sixth. The last trumpet has to be the seventh trumpet. So, therefore, the rapture takes place all the way over here at the end or near the end of the 70th week. What some of them will also do, then, get Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 31 and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end, from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew 24, 31 is a description of what happens at the second coming. So what people often do is they say, well, the last trump, it's either the seventh trumpet of Revelation or it's the trumpet at the second coming. And what that does is, Boy, that just destroys the whole idea of a pre-trib rapture because the rapture has to happen at the last trump. If I say that the question we're doing right now is the last question, that is a contextual statement because as of right now, we intend to meet again tomorrow and there will be new questions tomorrow. Now, the rapture could happen, and we may not have a program, or something could come up, but there will be new questions tomorrow, and when I say that we're on the last question, you have to understand that in context, okay? So that's point number one. But point number two, I mean, let's just think about this for a minute. Get with me 1 Thessalonians 5. You should never take an unclear verse and allow it to alter your understanding of a clear verse, okay? And what I'm going to suggest to you is there are some very clear verses that tell you that the catching up of the body of Christ is pre-tribulational. Don't take this last Trump verse, which has confused many people, and use it to overthrow all of the clear verses. Look with me at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now think about that. If God hath not appointed us to wrath, but he's not going to rapture you until after the 70th week, you know what you're going to be appointed to? You know what you're going to face? You're going to face wrath because the 70th week is a time of wrath. If God hasn't appointed you to wrath, then he better remove you from the time before he pours out his wrath. Now just think about this for a moment, if you would. If we hide the dispensation of grace, in Acts 2, when Peter stands up to speak, he says, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And he's obviously describing the 70th week. 
Had the prophetic calendar continued without being interrupted, they would have gone directly into the 70th week. What that means is God's choice to insert the dispensation of grace was an intentional act to put off, to hold, to withhold, to prevent wrath from being poured out at that time. In other words, he called a timeout on the pouring out of wrath. It's God is not going to pour out wrath during the dispensation of grace, and the body of Christ is not appointed to wrath because we live during the time of grace. Therefore, the body of Christ is not going into the 70th week, and the seventh trumpet can't be the time of the last trump when the, when the body of Christ is removed from the earth. Get with me. Romans chapter 16. Now I'm going to give you my opinion here. You can decide for yourself whether or not this is true. Romans 16, 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. So the mystery was kept secret since the world began. No one knew it until God revealed it to the Apostle Paul. So then think about that just for a minute. If a bunch of these prophecies in the Old Testament are fulfilled during the dispensation of grace, isn't that a revelation of the dispensation of grace during the time when God said it was hid? Put another way, can the body of Christ, which is itself a mystery, Ephesians 3, well, they'll just read it. Get Ephesians 3. I was going to say it to you, but it's better for you to read it with your own eyes. Look with me at Ephesians 3. Look at verse 4. Whereby when ye read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ in verse 4 is specifically defined in verse 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body. So the body of Christ is the mystery of Christ. Now let me just ask you this. Can the body of Christ, which is a mystery, can it be part of what is a prophetic event that had been foreshadowed in time past? That doesn't fit. Now get with me 1 Corinthians 15. I want you to notice something. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Now that doesn't say last trumpet, does it? It says last trump. Some people will say, well, it's the same thing. You know, you're just quibbling. Trump is the archaic word of saying trumpet, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, sometimes the Bible uses alternate forms of the same word and they have the same meaning. I acknowledge that to be the case. And the Bible does use synonyms sometimes. But other times, the Bible uses words that are similar in appearance, but they do not mean the same thing. Now I'm going to read to you the definition of Trump from the Compact Oxford English Dictionary. Here we go. While the word trump can be a variant of trumpet, it can also be used in an archaic sense to refer to the blast of a trump. In other words, the word trump, it can mean the instrument, but you know what also it can mean? It can mean the sound that an instrument produces. So in other words, one trumpet could produce multiple trumps because it could sound more than once. So now get with me 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And we're going to go through 1 Thessalonians 4 here. Now by the way, notice what we're doing. So in 1 Corinthians 15, we were reading about the rapture. As you think about the rapture in 1 Corinthians 15, one of the things that should just pop into your mind is well, I, I should probably compare this to other passages about the rapture. And one of the first ones that you should think of is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. So that's what we're going to do. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, 
concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. So this is how you think about deceased loved ones. Verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So when Jesus Christ descends at the time of the rapture, who does he bring with him? He brings with him the dead in Christ. They're part of his group, his posse, his, uh, his peeps. Look with me at verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now let's reread that verse carefully and understand what it means. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain. So there's some that are living on the earth because they are alive and remain. And there's some that have already slept in Christ. They're dead. And the ones that are dead, they come back with him. But notice what this says. We which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. What does prevent mean? Does that mean we're going to prevent them from being raptured? Are we going to prevent them from obtaining a blessing? Are we going to prohibit them from doing something? Prevent literally means to come before. So pre, we understand, means before. Prequel, it's a movie before the other one. Vent is come, so it's come before. The way that this normally works is let's say that I'm going to exit that way. And as I'm exiting that way, someone comes over and they stand in my way to prevent me from exiting. What happened is they came before me to that spot and they prevented me from exiting. So now think about this verse again. Those that are alive don't prevent they don't come before those who are asleep. Now notice verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain don't prevent them which are asleep. We don't come before them because the dead in Christ rise first. Verse 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So I want you to notice three things from this passage. The first thing is, verse 16, when the Lord descends from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, so when he descends, he descends with some noise being made. It's with a shout, it's with the voice of the archangel, and then notice what it says, with the trump of God. Oh, that's fascinating. That doesn't say trumpet, does it? It says trump. And now what we notice is this. There are only two verses in the Bible that use the word trump. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians 4, not a coincidence. Now, read verse 16 again. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Oh, the issue here is it's a sound. With the voice of the archangel, the issue is it's a sound. And with the trump of God. So here's what happens. The first event, the Lord descends with the sound, the voice of the archangel, the trump. Second event, the dead in Christ rise first. Third event, we which are alive and remain are caught up. Now, with that as context, get 1 Corinthians 15 and see if this doesn't fall into place. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And let's start in verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So in verse 51, Paul's not talking about the dead in Christ that rise first. He's talking about those which are alive and remain. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Now, I told you earlier that the word trump means the sound, not the instrument. 
Notice what the verse then says. For the trumpet shall what? Sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So here's what happens. There is more than one trump. There is more than one sounding. At the first sounding, the dead in Christ shall rise. At the second sounding, at the last sounding, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Now, I want, to, I want you to notice something with me. Get with me uh, 1 Corinthians, and we're going to look at two different verses here. Uh, look with me at verse 47. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. The first man is obviously Adam. The second man is the Lord from heaven. That's Jesus Christ. Look with me at verse 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The last Adam is obviously Jesus Christ. So notice how cleverly this fits. Verse 47 says, first man and second man. Verse 45 says, first man and last Adam. So in the context of 1 Corinthians 15, there's first and then there's second or last. So the last trump is the second trump. And what's going on is the first trump is when the Lord descends, the first trump plays. In other words, the trumpet sounds for the first time and the dead in Christ shall rise. 1 Corinthians 15, 52, the last trump, it even tells us here, look at verse 51, we shall not all sleep, these are those who are alive and remain, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Hopefully you can see all that fits together. That has nothing to do with the seventh trumpet of Revelation or the last trumpet that sounds at the second coming. That's all just, that, that is completely, utterly different, has nothing to do with the body of Christ. So you can see what the last trump is. It's the second sounding of the trumpet when the Lord returns at the catching up and the body of Christ receives its new bodies.